So, obviously we know who the superpower is. Obviously we know who the weakest, the weakest state is. Strongest state, weakest state, middle. Okay. In this, if I were the superpower, this is the obvious target, right? So if, what I've already done strategic war planning, if I were um, state A, I have a better likelihood of dominating state C than state B. That's obvious, right? So imagine that I wanted to attack state C, which is my likely target, right? Well, what would end up happening is state C would recognize, right, that their combination 150 plus 100 equals 150. So a coalition would form between these two states, right? State C would say, hey, I'm being attacked by state A. Um, we need to team up, we need to form a coalition. Remember this, is, uh, I didn't put it up here, but this, the section of this is uh, sort of coalition formation. We need to form a coalition to defend ourselves from state A. State A can attempt to attack state B, a harder target than C, but still no match for state A. State A can attack state B. State B would tell state C, hey, um, why don't we team up? And so far as we team up, um, we will define, defend ourselves against state A. And um, Moreau has an actual interesting part to say on this, and I, I just want to read this, this uh, section. Um, he says, in a three-actor system where one state controls exactly 150 points, three-actor system, one state controls exactly 150 points, that is half of the resources in the system, half of the resources in the system. The other two must uh, come to each other's aid if it is threatened, if it threatens either of them, right? So if you are attacking me, we'll join up. If you are attacking me, we'll join up. Same thing. Otherwise, the state that sits on the sideline will be eliminated in the next round. Now, that's the important point, right? If it's the case that A is attacking C and B does nothing to come to the aid of C, then what happens in the next round is that we're going to have what? And the question is, what you should be thinking, I'm going to write down the answer in a second, but what you should be thinking about is what do I need to put in these circles, right? If it's the case that A is going to attack C and B decides to sit out this round of attacks, well, what happens in the next round of attacks? What will end up happening is we'll have A, A attacks C, so C is ejected from the game, right? C is ejected from the game. We have B, A has now assumed C, so A is at 200, and B is at 100. Now I'm double as strong as B. And then what will end up happening is in the next round, uh, there will be A with 300, right? So it is to B's advantage to prevent the doubling of resources, the distribution of resources in state A to defend C, right? And this is what um, Hobbes, and in a Hobbesian sense, you can say is uh, a form of sort of um, state level psychological egoism, right? Um, it's not that I really essentially, you don't necessarily essentially have to be altruistic in your defense of C if they are attacked as the weakest, obviously, state, right? It's not that B has to be altruistic in its agreement to support and defend C from attack. It's that it's to B's best interest to defend C. It's to C's best interest to defend B because in the second round of attacks, A is going to become more powerful. And then obviously, if if um, A and B are in conflict, if C decides to sit out, which would be the dumbest thing ever, then it, it's exponentially strong. Well, not exponentially, it's significantly stronger. Right? It would be uh, 250 to 50. So um, uh, it's it's important to to recognize that. Right? Okay. So what he what what uh, Moreau says um, what he says in this section he says um, in a three state system where one state controls exactly 50 points. The other two must come to each other's aid if threatened, either of them. Otherwise, the state, otherwise, the state that sits on the sidelines, either um, B or C, will be eliminated in the next round. If the stronger of the two weaker states threatens the other, the latter can transfer resources to the, um, to the state with 150 um, resources and so doom the threatening state. So, if the stronger of the two weaker states threatens the other, so if the stronger of the two threatening states, right? If the stronger of the two threatening states, 
if the stronger of the two um, weaker states threatens the other, the latter, right, the weaker, can transfer resources to the state with 150 resources and so doom the threatening state, right? So there is a sense in which, and we'll talk about this later, I don't want to introduce the term yet, but there is a sense in which um, sort of the position of the state can be guaranteed. There's a technical name for that. I don't want to jump the gun and tell you what that is. Okay, so we recognize in this example that both, um, in, in this particular case, we would say that this system is both resource stable and system stable, right? Nobody's going to get ejected from the game, no one, or from the system, um, and there doesn't need to be a transference of resources uh, between states. Okay. Now let me give you, unlike um, in a, a two-system, two-state two system, where there wasn't a possibility to have system-only stability, um, there is a possibility in a three-state system to have system-only stability, meening that there will be a, transfer, a transference of resources, right? If there are a transference of resources, then it's not resource-stable. So there is a possibility in a two-state, uh, in a three-state um, system to have um, stability for system, system stability, no one's going to get ejected, but not resource stability. And the question is, how is that possible? What does that look like? So let's look at that. Let's change these numbers around. Um, so let's say that this is 120, this is 100, and this is 80. Right? Um, this is an example of a system stable three state system, right? It's three states, A, B, C, and it's system stable. Nobody's going to be eliminated from the system. However, it's not resource stable, right? It's not resource stable. And the question is, how, well, why isn't it resource stable? So let's look at the following example. Imagine, um, if you will, that there is a threat. We obviously know this is the strongest state. This is the weakest state. This is in the middle. So imagine, if you will, that there was a threat. And we'll do the example of before. This state is obviously close to getting this state's power, right? They're, they're, they're very close. It's, it's harder for me to attain this level um, of, of resource competition. So it's likely that I, I mean, this state, what do you, uh, the question is, well, what do you think this state wants, right? This state wants to get domination of this state. If I could just get, if I could just get 30 more points, I'd be able to dominate the state. Right? So there's going to be obvious conflict between these two states. Right? So the, the point, if you think about this logically, is what's probably going to happen, it doesn't have to be the case, but it's probably going to happen that there's going to be competition between B and C. Right? Oops. There's going to be competition between B and C. Right? And that B is going to attempt to get basically the 80 points from C and then use that 80 points to dominate A. Right? So the competition between B and C so we have 180, and if that's the case, then we'll end up in a situation where, obviously, this beats that, where you would have B at 180, which then could be used to battle um, A, right? So then it would be B versus A. And we would go from a three-state system to a two-state system, right? And that two-state system, just to be clear, would be this. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean, mean to circle it, but uh, it would be that. Obviously, B would win out and then we would have B in the last round at 300. Right? That would be sort of the, the flow of, of conflict. That's how the conflict would unfold. However, knowing this, right? so that's, we, we recognize strategically that's where this is going to head. However, what I do is I recognize as state C that state A is minus 30, right? State A is minus 30 from having the required 150, right? State A is minus 30, 30 points below, having the re required one half, 150, right? We don't want to give them more than 150 because then I jeopardize my own, and I'll explain this in a little bit. Um, we recognize that they're minus 30 from having 150, so what I do is I transfer 30, right? I transfer 30 to state A, so that the next round is going to look like this, right? So that we'd have a, B, C, this would be 150, this would be 100, and this would be 50, right? What ends up happening is that I maintain 
system stability, right? System stability is still there, right? The system is still stable. I still have ABC. So we've checked off system stability. No states are eliminated from the system. So we've satisfied that condition. However, we have not satisfied the resource stability condition. Why? Because there's a transference of minus 30 from here. Minus 30 here, plus 30 here, gave that 150. So it's 150, 100, and then 50. 